Yeah. That's why I wear sandals. Pardon? That's why I wear sandals. Oh. And a skirt, but I guess that's not really an option. But um, could be. Could be. <laughs> As if I don't. So we need a volunteer note taker. My normal suspect is probably running his own meeting. Um, I'm on it. Who was that? That was me, Aaron Cable. Oh, there you go. We'll take it. Um, I've put the agenda in it. You can just plot the notes wherever you want in that mess. Let me fix it. All right, you think we can go, y'all? You're muted. Every time I try to um, unmute myself, uh, the meet echo warns me that I'm local and that it might be causing the feedback. Okay. <laughs> oh, so, um, Welcome all to the ACME meeting at ITF 114. Um, see that only I'm wearing an ACME shirt, right? But let's get on with it. So this is a note well. I'm sure you've all seen it uh, plenty of times. Uh, so we'll not dwell on that too much. Specifically for ITF 114, um, in-person participants, uh, make sure to sign the session using the Meet Echo, Meet Echo Lite, that's easy to do by scanning the uh, QR code at the door and use Meteco to join the mic microphone queue and keep audio and video off if you're not using on-site version. And wear masks unless you're actively speaking at the microphone. And this is something, regardless of how we feel about it, this is something we all agreed when we signed up for this meeting. So wear your masks. And make sure audio and video are off unless you're sharing or presenting and use the headset is strongly recommended for remote participants, yeah, like I am. Okay, uh, so the agenda, we've got the meet echo. So this is our own specific agenda. We'll do the note well, already done. Technical difficulties, we so far haven't needed to um, do that. And administrative, uh, we already got to note taker. And we'll do the document status, then we'll talk about uh, current work items, which are um, dictated in node ID and um, ARI, which is not really a current work item because we haven't adopted it yet, but we'll talk about that as well. And then um, there's potential new work uh, from Brandon Weeks. Any agenda bashing before we continue? Good. So document status, we don't have any new RFCs since uh, Vienna. Um, ACME authority token um, has a discuss from Ben Kadex since November of uh, 2021. New version 08 from this month and what do we do? Ben Kadex is no longer an AD. Do you wanna do that one and the one on the next slide at the same time? John's okay. here, both All right. As is so, uh, okay. Acme client, we have a new version uh, 05 from April. Very light discussion on the mailing list, but that's kind of part for the course. And then we have um, TN auth list. Current version is from 26th of March, 2021, which I think is right from Vienna. There are three outstanding discusses and a revised ID needed. And, so oh, sorry, March of 2021, which is over a year before Vienna. And then DTN node ID is current version is from just before ITF 113, uh, waiting for write-up external parties since March of 2022. 
and we'll have a presentation today. Yes, Robert. So we have John, we have John at the mic. How's it going? Yeah, so we did try at least to deal with the discuss on the first of these documents on the, the uh, original authority token doc. I know we have not gotten to the token TNOT list. I'm not actually the editor of that one, but like hopefully with this new 08 version, it's like better. Um, I tried to fix what seemed to be the major discusses that were out there and even to address the majority of Ben's comments. So we still have work to do obviously on TNOT list and you know, Ben, it's a very thorough reader and had like a ton to say about that doc that we need to get to. And I will help the editors, uh, the editor of that to get that done. So can I ask you who the editor of that is? I think it's either Chris or Mary. I'm not actually okay. sure who last had the okay. XML for it, but yeah, Chris or Mary. All right, so we know who to chase now for that one. Yeah. Because um, it's not you. <laughs> well, I mean, I can obviously do some work, but I need like the source. And, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it was, it, I mean, it's really, uh, honestly, it's probably more responding to Ben's mail in particular, that is the long pole in that tent, because there's just a ton there's a ton of comments. And honestly, when I looked at it, some of it does spill over between the documents even a bit. So like, yeah, there's, there's actual work that needs to be done. It's hard to get people to do actual work. Is it worth bringing this, the document that you are the editor for back into the working group to get it reviewed because we don't have Ben anymore? Um, I mean, I think the authority token document should be cool. Like in terms of what the, it's the other ones, it's the Anothalist one that, right. you know, if, if we're in trouble, I don't know if we need to bring it back to the working group. I and mean, honestly, it just is a matter of getting the cycles to do it. And like definitely a revised idea is needed. There's, there's no, uh, no doubt so, about that. But somebody that. needs to review the updated 08 version, right? It's true. I mean, I assume the ISG would review it at this point. Or. Or. Yeah, like in theory, Paul Hoffman inherited these uh, discusses, but um, I don't think he so, really knows so much about have them. Inherited, not Hoffman. Oh, okay. yeah. sorry. Yeah, so so, so uh, Roman Dini responsible idea. Yeah, so uh, a couple of observations. First, uh, I think that I would be reticent to bring, to, to do a different progression on the documents separately. They're clearly you know inter intertwined and if something comes up and we advance one too far forward, we're gonna be in a pickle. So I wanna move them in, in lockstep. So even if we clear on the other one and we haven't cleared on this one, like I'd wanna hold it. So I think part of it is I would need to revisit where we are, but it looked like substantial changes were needed on the TN off list based on, yeah. based on the feedback. So typically what we do when we have substantial changes, we wanna reconfirm consensus on the solution. So what we don't wanna do is reiterate in the ISG, because we still need to check with the working group that they're good with the big changes. And then there's a judgment call there whether we got to go back to the community. So my recommendation would be given that we're anticipating big changes on that, the easiest way to do the consensus check and have a formal process to know where we are in that where we are instead of you know doing this kind of side consultation would be to bring it back to the to the working group. I mean, sure, I, obviously the working group should read it. I think we wanna bring the attention of the working group to the changes that have already been made to the authority token document and ask if everyone here is cool with what's in the 08 of that. Mm -hmm. I think that is something that's probably worth doing at this point. I, I, I definitely agree we should move these together, that it doesn't make sense to advance the authority token document without TN off list or vice versa. And so I guess, you know, the question is, do we want to start that process of just sending mail to list and saying like, hey, is everybody still cool with what's an authority token now as of the 08? Like, or do we want to wait until TNOT list is also iterated and then ask the working group, are both of those documents jointly cool? So but we, I think that kind of can occur in parallel with the IHG's ongoing review of this, right? I, what I don't want is for these things to literally be like, you know, go through a new pub rec and a new like, you know, gen art and everything when they've already been to the ISG. Well, we actually do that all the time. Uh, and I stare at it, I guess, um, I, I just don't know where the energy is. So we're 15 months from the last version of that document. So that gives me great pause, I guess. And given that I didn't hear kind of firm dates, we're gonna, we're committed to, to, to hammering it kind of here, you know, at a particular time, we are we sure about the editors, we're not, like maybe we'll track them down. I, I'm concerned that we can close it, it's been 15 months. And that's the consensus check I'm primarily after. I mean, when it's been 15 months since we did it, we have big kind of problems. Uh, I, I mean, I'm kind of, what I was hoping to hear is a lot of energy to kind of move forward because my gut is I'm not sure and that's why I want to bring it back. 
So why don't I take an action to go back to the TN auth list authors and find out who the editor is, who has the pen, who has the pen, and, and give them and make them tell me how long it's going to take them for them to update the document. Once they update the document and reissue, right, then we drop them back down to the working group for a short period of time just to review them both in parallel. And at that point, we pop them. If they're fine, we just ship them up and, and we're done, right? Because we should clear the discusses on TN off, and there are no, there's nothing to clear on the other document, the one that has all the Ben comments on it. Yeah. And so I think we'll, there's like one Francesca thing or something that, that there is something from Francesca, yeah. but I and don't I remember I what document that. that's on. Yeah, it, on the token authority. Well, she's not reviewing anything, because. Yeah, in, in terms of process, <laughs> just to, just to make sure we have the names right, uh, the others are comments. Uh, these are the blocking discusses, and Paul did uh, did take up Ben's position, so Paul can help us. Right. This results. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wow. Um, well, you know. Yeah. Right. Uh, former chair. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Deb. Um, President. The T whatever. <laughs> the TN stuff was def came to you know. Hope John, correct me if I got a character if my memory's faulty. But it came from the stir stuff, and it wasn't really, I mean, the domain expertise is, for the most part, over there. Right. So if it languished for more than a year, um, it was probably not purely the working, ACME working group's issue or concern, and it might have fallen through the cracks because some of the people got busy on other stuff in stir. That's I mean, I'm right. happy to involve stir if we need to involve stir. Like, I don't think that's a problem, right? And again, I won't put myself back in the queue, yeah. but yeah, I mean, part of the issue is, right, that we ended up using some of this, but not all of it in the way that we practically do certificate issuing here in the United States, right, for stir shaken. And like, so yes, and stir shaken has become this whole thing. It's like really huge and we're all super busy with it. And so this, this was, is not front burnered because we, we need the token format and that's already written into some like ADIS documents and other standards bodies, things like it. But we haven't seen a lot of uptake on actually using Acme for this, bluntly. Now, I, I'm not thrilled about that in the sense of we have like a short-lived certificate story that we're building for STIR that really should rely on Acme for it to work. And it would be a shame if we can't get that to work because it's one of the best solutions that, you know, we could really have to some of the more difficult um, non-carrier stir shaken cases. So it's like, yeah, because of that, the energy around it is sporadic, right? Like, I mean, uh, uh, I'm not going to, you know, try to sweep that under the rug. It hasn't been critical path for us to get this done, but you know, in light of some more recent things, that has injected some energy back into it, especially because of the potential for doing short-lived, which we need for something that I know Chris feels pretty strongly about. And it, I mean, if you put me on the spot, I'm pretty sure Chris is the one that is supposed to, or at least has the latest version of the source for this TNOPLIS document. So like, I believe the energy exists to do it. Um, again, I can't, I don't think I can make promises for when, but like, you know, that's the situation. So, I mean, we're happy to do the right thing for the for the situation, right? We just need to we need to get it going. We need to get it going, and that that's how I summon the energy to do the document that I did, right? Because I okay. see this coming down the pike, and I'm like, okay, this has got to get done. And I had cycles to do that, but not to intervene on this and do this one too. And like, if necessary, I'll do this one too, right? At the end of the day, um, I don't know, we could share the load to somebody else. I mean, there's like four authors on all of these things. I know, yeah. And there's like no reason for one person to be doing all the work. I know. So, all right. So <laughs> let's, let's stick with, unless Sean's got a comment, because Sean's at the mic. Hello, Sean Turner. I will volunteer to re review these drafts when you rest the XML from Chris's hands and get it fixed. Oh, you're the so best. I'll, right. I'll be, I'll volunteer. So I think the plan is to, to contact the authors of TN Auth and find out, or whatever we're calling that thing. <laughs> Um, figure out when we can get an update to that. We'll bring them all, both of them back to the working group for a two week last call. And we'll review it with the number of reviewers that we normally get in this working group, um, which is uh, three. possibly more than the number of authors of the document, but I wouldn't count on that. There's like four or five of those. And then um, push it back up again. Do you agree? I'm looking at you off. He doesn't know I'm looking at him, though. What do you think? Yeah, good. that sounds uh, good enough. I mean, one outcome is that uh, the group has lost interest, interest and uh, we buried the documents. I mean, that's also a possible outcome if 
really there's no energy to write them. I mean, if this was really important for people, then uh, the original authors not having energy would mean that somebody else takes the pen. But I don't see anybody else rushing to take the pen either. So, um, well, I guess it all depends on the current authors getting uh, getting the energy to uh, revise. So when we make that and... when we make that working group last call, we'll CC Stir too while we're at yeah. it because that might get us a few more reviews. Right. Okay. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah. Okay. Good. Because we'd like to get this done, right? It needs to be. Yeah, right. It doesn't, you don't need to hang it over your head for the rest of your life, right? Just saying. Okay. Next. So, um, two more things. Uh, integrations uh, went through working group last call. Not a lot of discussion. The uh, question is, are we ready to go ahead? And subdomains just finished uh, working group last call. So I, I think Anything integrations you? had a handful of reviews. Mm -hmm. um, it's got some tie-ups with lamps in that there's a, is Mike Richardson in here? No. Oh, I'll look at that. Um, he's got a draft in lamps that needs to get adopted. But I mean, I guess that's not our problem, right? Right. Okay. So I say we push both of those. Okay. And okay, and then there was ARI, which we um, had an adoption call. And well, when it was presented in Vienna and uh, the previous uh, meeting, uh, there was a lot of enthusiasm in the room, the virtual room at least. And then we called for adoption and uh, heard pretty much nothing from on the mailing list. Uh, so, yeah, how do we deal with that? Well, anyway, we do have a presentation, so uh, we might uh, want to delay the um, that discussion until uh, today's presentation. Okay, and with that, uh, it's time for ACME DTM Node ID. Brian? So there's Brian. Yes, hello. Oh, you get the slides already. Yep. We can hear you. I, I mean, you're always going to drive your slides for you. OK. Because he's got uh, a deep deck. Yeah. All two of them. Very short, yes. Uh, so go ahead to the next to slide. The real slide, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the good news is that there has not been any further changes um, since the last IETF. These are really the same notes as before, summarizing the, the last changes in the document. Um, the bad news is that there hasn't been any feedback or, or real progress so far on this. Um, the uh, the COSE document is still in, in Auth48, which isn't a, a huge holdup. Um, and the I, I did, don't have it on this slide, but the, the corresponding DTN document to add a, a missing IANA registry that's needed here um, is still being requested for uh, working group adoption, but it's also not a controversial thing uh, in the other working group. So uh, if you go to the next slide. There is no next slide. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, uh, the... Uh, the last uh, IETF uh, ended up with this uh, requesting uh, a last call since there were changes in function, changes in on the wire encoding on on this behavior for the uh, the um, algorithm uh, agility. Uh, but I have not seen anything since then. So we asked for a last call, right? Or we asked for a review? What are we doing here? Roman? Yeah, I'm just pulling up. The way I, yeah, so we went to ITF last call, a bunch of uh, things were kind of requested. We made breaking changes in the protocol. And I think the call on the list was, can we confirm that people put eyes on those changes and we're good to go? It's, I think it's like a consensus recheck question because at a last call we did do make breaking changes like separating separating the bundle. So I think what would help us here is a couple eyes on it and say, 
we're all okay with it and I will give it another look and then we can ship it. And the, the main actual benefit of these last changes was to bring this behavior more into conformance with the RFC 8823 behavior. So, so this behavior logically um, is that same workflow. For those that don't, don't the Roman did it, for those that don't track <laughs> RFC numbers, it's the email challenge to make it yes. more consistent. Okay. Any comments yes. in person? Right, or we need reviewers. Notes? We always need reviewers. Okay, yes, Aaron. I know that I'm one of the commenters who requested uh, the changes to bring it more in line with the email validation. And I'm 99% sure that I've looked at it again since then and it looked good, but I will make sure that I take another look at it and send an email to the list as a reviewer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I don't have anything further then. Okay, so we'll reiterate the request for review um, and look and see how many reviews you already had. I think you had a couple, right? Um, and we'll see if we can't push this along. Great, thank you. Thank you. Oops. Okay, Aaron. Uh, yeah, next slide. <laughs> Um, not a, yeah, hi, Aaron Gable, uh, well, this is the RE, ARI, uh, Acme Revocation Information Draft, uh, it is currently at version 0 03, uh, so one new version since last Acme, uh, next slide. Um, most of the changes here are pretty small, uh, a few people spotted some minor typos and we got those cleaned up. Uh, there was some good discussion on the mailing list about why other solutions aren't viable solutions to the set of problems that this draft solves. And so I updated some of the text in the introduction to better address those questions uh, and clarified the suggested renewal algorithm. Uh, next slide. So this is just the one thing that is like actually slightly substantive. Uh, the there is text in the draft that describes what a client should do with the information about its requested renewal window. Uh, and previously it was phrased that the client must perform a specific set of calculations and then simply should renew at the time resulting from that set of calculations. And some people I think rightfully pointed out that that's a kind of weird way to phrase it. And so instead I've changed it to exactly the text that is on this slide, uh, which is that they must attempt renewal at a time based on the suggested window. Uh, and we merely recommend a specific algorithm for determining a time within that window. Um, obviously I would like people to take a look at this slightly changed text provide feedback about it, uh, let me know if it makes sense, if it seems like a reasonable way to standardize this, et cetera. But I think all of that will be part of just the, the current round of document review. Um, next slide. Um, yeah, so next steps. Uh, I just slightly updated the draft, so I need to go back and update the current implementation uh, to match the, the very latest version, um, but that's not hard at this point. Um, and after the last IETF, uh, Deb sent out an email uh, asking for a call for adoption review and feedback and support for call for adoption. And there was a small amount of discussion on the list. Uh, and I have addressed all of the feedback received from that discussion so far. Uh, but I think the next big step is uh, whatever the chairs want to do with the discussion that's happened so far. And that's all I've got. So I think we need more review on this, right? I mean, it does need, when we ask for the call for adoption, we need people to pop up and say whether they think it should be adoption, adopted or not. 
Um, so I think we're going to redo the call for adoption again, and hopefully we'll get more people popping up and saying, yeah, we want this. Um, uh, in yeah, Vienna, I think we had a bunch of people saying they thought this was worthy of adoption, and when we made the call on the list, there was like crickets. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I uh, think there was a specific here. I'm sure we would get uh, like uh, 10 people or well, 20 people saying, yeah, we should adopt this. But then when you ask them the list, nothing. Right. I mean, to be yeah, frank, I we're not going to get 20 people on anything on this working group. So yeah. I would be happy for five. Honestly. And that's 30 people in the room. I uh, really? Yeah, I don't 31. <laughs> Yeah, so on the mailing right? list, there is currently uh, support for adoption from two people, uh, Melinda Shore and Peter Thomason. Um, and that's that's it on the list so far. Yeah. All right. All right, so we'll remake that call for adoption. Hopefully we'll get a little more pickup this time. Since all the people in the mm -hmm. room have heard now that we're going to ask for adoption, Mr. Saltz. Yeah. I'm saying it, what we're saying is that uh, don't assume that just because you said, uh, yeah, let's adopt it in the meeting, that it applies to the formal call for adoption. Yes, Rich. Yeah, you could call for adoption here in the room and then post on the list if anyone objects. Can we do it that way? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it, do it that lot. way. So do you think we should adopt this draft? Well, yes. Do we raise hands or do we do a fancy little vote thing? We do the fancy thing, yeah. If, um, yeah show of hands too. Uh, true. Let me. Did he say to do a fancy tool, a fancy little thing? Oh, look at that. Okay, I mean, because know. these polls uh, don't appear in the YouTube recording, uh, we're running a poll now that says, should we adopt ARI? And so far we've had, well, I'll wait for the final results, which we'll declare, I guess. There's in, nobody uh, voting against it. Yeah. Okay, and so we have- more voting uh, for it than we've had emails yeah. on the list. So. Yeah, so you had 17 uh, people raised their hand, indicating that we should adopt ARI, and zero uh, not raising their hand, actively not raising their hand, which means that we should not raise. So it's 17 to zero for adopting ARI. Right, so as Rich said, I mean, just go to the mailing list and say, were there any objections given what looked like consensus from this meeting? And I can give them a week or two weeks and let it roll. Okay, cool, that's easier. Because apparently it's easier to do it in the room than it is to do it on the list. Cool. Well, All right. There is a reason why we're having these meetings. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So thank you, Aaron. Um, any other comment? Okay. So let's go on to uh, the new proposed stuff. Uh, yes, Brandon. So you can come up and stand on the little pink X. And you, if you want to take off your mask, you can. So it's up to you, whatever you want to do. You probably have to be near the microphone, though. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Brandon Weeks. I'm from Google. Uh, just to clarify, uh, I'm on our security team, and specifically our corporate security team. So I do not represent any products whatsoever. and have no influence over product direction. Um, Next slide, please. Uh, TLDR, why am I here? Um, this is a specification, and it's relatively simple, that combines the WebAuthn attestation statement format, which is effectively a key value pair, where the key is a attestation format that it exists in a registry, and the value is a format-specific uh, series of bytes, with Acme. Um, the reason I care about this is this seems like an ideal way to issue client certificates uh, for primarily things like laptops, workstations, and servers. But I don't think there's any reason that the specification necessarily be restricted to that. Um, 
I can, someone could come up with a use case where you want to connect to the same server every time. Um, and for reasons that become clear in a later slide, uh, I'd like to call for adoption at this meeting if possible. Uh, next slide, please. So why Acme? Uh, there's numerous uh, certificate enrollment prof uh, protocols. Um, most of them are IETF specs. However, SCEP remains the standard for operating system vendors, uh, device management vendors, um, CMP, EST, CMC, all of those specifications haven't really seen any adoption from operating system vendors. While they might be adopted in networking gear, um, I don't know exactly why, but they're, most of them predate my professional career and we've seen no real adoption of them. Um, Acme is incredibly well designed, I'd like to say. Uh, thank you to the authors. Um, this draft doesn't even really extend it that much because all of the extension hooks were pre-envisioned by the authors. So it was relatively simple to combine these. And Acme has, is really well supported across languages, across platforms. Um, and I don't believe that to be true for CMP, EST, et cetera. It's kind of hard to implement those in newer languages um, or depending on the, the libraries that you're allowed to use at your, uh, in your environment. Next slide, please. So what makes this a good time to do this? Um, this is probably the first time we can say that most of the devices that are purchased and deployed, at least in enterprise environments, actually have a way to do a device identity attestation and the device can uh, identify itself and speak for itself without users. So on Android, we've had Android key attestation since 7.0, which is I think over five years old. Um, Apple introduced managed device attestation, um, this WWDC, so on iOS. So that's kind of the major platform that has been <laughs> blocking this from being ubiquitous. Um, it's not available on Mac OS yet, but hopefully it is someday. Um, someday soon. Uh, Chrome OS has this. Um, the rats eat specification uh, is attempting to build a standardized way of doing attestation uh, statements that doesn't involve having uh, four different, five different uh, specifications. Um, and I would one day like to include that, but today we have the formats that we have. Um, and TPMs is probably the most well-known. Um, and this is uh, what's mostly used on Linux, Windows, and other operating systems that don't have proprietary attestation schemes. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so WebAuthn has already got Mindshare as seemingly the de facto format for encapsulating and abstracting uh, different attestation formats across vendors. Um, Apple already adopted it in their uh, app attest, which is their anonymous attestation that is provided to app developers. Um, and they've since adopted for their managed device attestation feature, that is their non-anonymous uh, feature for managed enterprise devices. Um, I've discovered this week that there's two other IETF drafts that were presented at 114 that also made independent decisions to use the same format. Um, there's one for including attestation formats in TLS, uh, and there was another for uh, essentially backporting this to CMP and EST and existing uh, like older certificate uh, protocols. Um, and like Acme, uh, WebAuthn enjoys fairly ubiquitous uh, library support across languages and across platforms. Um, almost like every vendor already had to build this for their browser. Um, so it should be pretty easy to integrate um, into other parts of their platform. Next slide, please. Hi, Roman, before we jump off that, uh, for anyone that was in LAMPS, maybe Shauna Rich, didn't we learn that after some discussion with the, uh, the designated experts for the web authn registry that the approach wasn't what we thought it was going to be for that LAMPS document? You. Yeah. Got it. 
you you can't put what was intended in that registry. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. Correct. yeah, I. I believe the outcome was there are the attestation formats that are already defined in WebAuthn. There's an extensible registry for that exists already for formats that would make sense for the primary use case of WebAuthn, and we'll likely need to create an additional registry for formats that don't fit into like the actual WebAuthn FIDO um, scheme. I think there's another question. Hank, where's Hank? Hank's not here. Say, am I audible? <laughs> am I? Yes. I don't know. I assume I'm audible because I can't hear you. Uh, just not if I'm audible. They're all going outside. They're all right. Just not if I'm audible. You're up, Hank. Am I? I'm yeah. not. Don't. Don't. Hank. <laughs> oh, okay. He's gone. Okay. Um, so what is the, the draft uh, proposed changing? Um, it adds uh, a new challenge, and that challenge encapsulates a WebAuthn uh, attestation statement format. Yeah. Um, we also have Kathleen in the queue if you want to. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Kathleen. Wait, can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. I had asked on the list, and I'm hearing a bad echo. I hope nobody else is. Nope, it's just you. I'll power through it. I had asked on the list and in the comments here for the working group to decide whether this should, if adopted, be combined with my client draft that already is adopted or if it should be separate. It already adds WebAuthn as an authentication type to be able to, uh, or a challenge rather, to uh, be able to get a certificate. So this is a little different, but there could be a good bit. I'm not sure what if this if the correct answer is a separate draft or being included. I will say that th the draft I'm proposing is fairly narrow. It only works. It's for devices. It's not. It doesn't touch certificates issued to users or authenticating users. Uh, it doesn't touch code signing, um, and it doesn't touch devices that lack the ability to attest to their own identity. Um, so this is a fairly narrow focus um, and the, the web auth end usage in the client certificate draft is around actually using the full web auth end spec this is narrowly tailored to only using the attestation statement format as an encapsulation for attestations the rest of web auth end has is has nothing to do with this proposal but I leave that up to the working group chairs, I think. Okay, Hank, are you back? I'm trying again. Is this working? Yes. Wonderful. Okay, yet another device. Hi. Um, so uh, I've been asked to come here, so I'm swinging by. Um, the LAMPS ID says that they use uh, cryptographic attestation in order to establish the provenance of a key. That's fine, but that is not what a TPM does in general. That's just one of the tiny things a TPM does. A TPM creates evidence about the system characteristics that can prove its trustworthiness, which has nothing to do with the web of N also. Web of N does not do that. And also, not that's true. That's not entirely true. Web of N two can do that optionally, um, which makes me happy to hear when you say Web of N is just about framing. I'm putting the evidence inside, and I think that's the term I want to hear here. If you are talking about the authenticity um, of, a, of a device that's trustworthy, meaning it is doing exactly what it's intended to do and nothing else, um, then I think you are absolutely go okay with saying um, uh, attestation evidence. But uh, please uh, differentiate between the uh, WebAuthn capabilities, the fact that they say 
over 500 times at a station and only mean it like four times, I think, between the uh, TPM uh, capability and, uh, and the other ones. So uh, just define, are you creating assertions that are actually believable over the trustworthiness or are you really talking about key provenance which are which is part of the first but it's absolutely not the first by itself just highlighting that thank you that's helpful um tpms have many many things it can do and lots of options but what the rest of the attestation schemes actually do in reality is relatively simple they provide evidence that the key was generated in hardware, and they provide uh, an identity of the device that's associated with that. Um, so for TPMs to kind of exist side by side with these other attestation schemes, we're really just using key certification um, along with either the endorsement key or the platform certificate or the endorsement certificate or the platform certificate to establish the identity of the device. Um, I think broader state attestation is kind of out of scope. Sorry for interrupting. Just state that up. So don't use the term like attestation. Just state what you're doing like you just did. And then mint the term in the context of your work. That's fine. You can call it GRR. Doesn't matter. Um, the really important thing is people understand what you're actually talking about. And I think that's a big problem with, with throwing the term attestation around because it means nothing anymore. If it, if you don't, can't even say it's a, if it's a procedure or a message. So um, if you're at that level, I think uh, really talking about the exact thing and defining it and then naming it is a better way around and then everybody will be happy here. And then you can uh, tie Android key at the station and GPMs and Apple key at the station, whatever, into there. And, and then that will all make sense. Thanks. Thank you for the feedback. Um, so, uh, what is the actually contained in the extension? Uh, it specifies an, a new challenge type. Um, when it, this challenge type is presented to a client, the client returns a web auth and attestation statement format, uh, in the response payload, the challenge response payload, which is not done by any other, uh, challenge types that I'm aware of today, but the high level ACME specification does have language around uh, future specifications may do this. Um, another way this could be done is involving an external verifier um, where the Acme server actually reaches out to the verifier. Um, but based on discussions I've had, most people seem to prefer the simpler method of passing that station directly to the Acme server. Um, it also uses the Acme specified key authorization as the nonce that's passed into uh, the key generation methods of the various formats. Um, and definitely open to feedback if this is the like the intended use of key authorization. Um, I specify two identifiers. Um, one uses the RFC 4043 permanent identifier to identify the platform. Um, I also included uh, a hardware module uh, identifier that was specified in RFC 4108. However, I've gotten feedback this week that this may not be the best idea. Uh, the reason I put that there in the first place was if you imagine a TPM device, uh, TPM included in a device that doesn't have an issued platform certificate, the, that device is actually unable to prove the identity of the device. It's only able to prove the identity of the TPM, which is a different assertion than would be made if a platform certificate exists or with the other attestation schemes, which do attempt to prove uh, the actual identity of the entire device, not just the security chip included in it. I also added informative text around uh, using external account binding for pre-authenticating requests to the CA. Uh, in my experience, most enterprise environments don't want to have uh, accept unauthenticated requests on the open internet. So they're likely would want to include this in some form of configuration management um, that's pushed down to the device before it um, is able to uh, prove its identity. Um, next slide, please. Do you want to take the question? Uh, yeah. Go on. Was just going to comment that um, I did something similar in a proprietary implementation of a, a new challenge type with a challenge response that contained a um, 
uh, a JWT authentication token using uh, the the DPOP work, um, and that seemed to work quite well. So that seems like quite a sensible thing to me. So thank you. Good to hear. Thank you. So existing implementation. Um, I created a fork of small step, which is a, uh, not a fork per se, a patch set of, series of patches of small step. It's a open source Golang CA um, that uh, along with a client that implements this for TPM at a station. Um, and it also includes a TPM simulator in case you want to run this on a regular laptop. Um, the demonstration CA also later added uh, support for Apple's managed device uh, attestation feature that they launched at WWDC. Um, the other major uh, implementation of this is Apple's iOS uh, 16 betas um, that uses this, uses uh, encoding, or including an Acme uh, web authn attestation statement in Acme uh, as the basis of requesting a certificate. Um, they, alongside SCEP and sending the private key plus certificate in a P12 payload or the other two methods they support on older versions. Um, and not included on this version of the slide, uh, Android has also uh, put this on their roadmap to include uh, alongside Apple. Next slide, please. And uh, now I have some questions uh, for everyone. Um, there's been some discussions I've had this week around um, the, the types of information that can be reflected into the client certificate that the CA has validated. Um, these would include things like the identity of the device, the identity of the uh, security chip, um, the key generation properties. Um, key generation properties seem like a specifically controversial um, thing to identify that um, has a lot of complexity about what does harder back mean? Um, what are the relative trust levels of a trust, trust zone versus discrete hardware versus hardware on die versus hardware on a bus? Um, and is this draft the place it should be? Or is that somewhere else? Because um, that's a, a pretty hard problem, it's sounding like. And the verification procedures, this came up on the, the mailing list. Someone asked, OK, why would my enterprise CA trust any of this? Um, each of the different attestation formats has various levels of quality of documentation. Um, the documentation where it does exist, there's often uh, asterisks and foot guns that, if implemented improperly, cause the system not to be secure. Um, and I don't believe there's any place this is really specified. I think WebAuthn has done the best cross attestation scheme attempt at documenting, but I know there's issues with. Um, it's not complete with all of the, the foot guns and asterisks. Um, does this belong in the, the RATS uh, working group? Does it belong in this document? Does this document have any, does this document stand alone without attempting to specify how uh, you implement verifiers for each of these schemes in a secure and correct manner? Um, Sean? Um, <clears throat> Sean Turner. Um, so in full disclosure, I am writing a draft in LAMPS about this key attestation stuff over there. So I'm basically supportive of this approach. For the first one, it seems like that is a hole that you could be buried in for a long, long time. Do we just set up a registry and leave it alone and make it first come, first serve and knock yourself out? So the mechanism is there to be able to specify what those things are and just punt completely? Because that would be an option to do that. Because if you're going to try to document all of them, Good luck. You'll come back and you'll have a long gray beard like I do. Yeah. Um, the verification procedures, they have to put something in there, right? But if it's if it's really that complicated, but again, there's a bunch of different options. I don't know how you write that. Right. So then you end up in this hole of like, if you do this, and then you do this, and if you did this, then you gotta do these 12 other things. So I'm not quite sure how to how to solve that one. But the first one I think just maybe make a registry and call it a day. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's it's fairly tractable to document verification procedures until you try to do it correctly, and then it <laughs> gets very complex from there. Sorry, um, you're next. <laughs> <laughs> so 
sorry, he was mine. Um, so I have a couple of comments on this. Um, one is we need to make sure that this is actually all verifiable. If um, uh, the ACME or the CA that's issuing the ACME certs or the relying party that then gets the certs can't be assured that the data in the cert is correct, then we're going the wrong way. Um, if the CA can't tell whether the device, I mean, the device can't just say, hi, I'm a TPM without proof that he is actually a TPM, right? So you have to be able to validate that. Now, it appears, I've spent like 15 minutes reading this stuff. It appears that Android and a bunch of places have basically root CAs that assert that these are devices that they have built. So that's fine um, within the realm of how trustworthy that is. So you can, that's another rabbit hole. Um, so that was my, my main, when I first saw this, my main concern was who's dis, who, who gets to decide whether this is what it really is and I can't self-assert. Like self-assertion should not be possible, uh, my opinion. Um, so that's, that's part of it. I had another point, what was it? Uh, um, I think you can't, when you talk about key generation and the quality of key generation, there's no way for a CA or a relying party to know how well you've done key generation. And you're back to basically self-assertion at that point. There's no way for an ACME CA to know that this TPM over there did it this way for real, right? I believe there is. It's, it's fairly, key certification is not simple with TPMs. And there's, again, many ways to do it incorrectly, but it is possible. And um, can the CA tell it's been done incorrectly? Yes. How? Um, when you generate a key, the, the policy is encoded um, in a string that is signed and verifiable. So if the key is not generated in an expected manner, so for example, TPMs allow key importation, and they also allow key generation, and you can actually tell the difference whether a key was imported or generated. Um, it, can, it provides evidence whether it was RSA or ECDSA. Um, and if, you, if you're in an environment that has an attestation CA or a privacy CA um, that is willing to de-anonymize clients as is in an enterprise environment, um, the privacy CA can pass along the identifiers included either in the endorsement key certificate, which identifies the TPM chip itself, or the platform certificate, which identifies the, the combination of a TPM and a uh, so how do I know the TPM hasn't lied? Uh, the the T, like the TPM has an endorsement key certificate, which is included. Um, you do what's called credential activation in TCG terms to turn a, a decrypt only EK into a signing AK okay. at, at attestation key, That's and the attestation key okay. going forward signs um, actually signs the key certification data that is sent to the ACME CA. So if you trust the TPM vendor, you can trust. Yeah, okay. So there's um, pitfalls here, I think. That's probably the best way to say that. I am generally untrustworthy of these things. Um, so maybe I'm a little un, and this is no hats, by the way. Um, this is just me. Um, Since Monty is standing right behind it, I will pick on the trusted computing group a little bit. Um, Android, Chrome OS, and Apple have implemented their attestation schemes in a way. So for example, Apple's managed device attestation, if it generates a key at all and it produces an attestation certificate, that was generated in their secure Enclave processor. There's no other way to get So Right, so as long as the Enclave processor is working correctly, you're good. Yep. If it's failed, you're screwed, right? Yeah, I'll kind of daisy chain up, but I, I yeah, the, the trust in the the TPM, Monty Wisen, by the way, um, the trust in the TPM is anchored in whoever signs the EK certificate, which says who made the TPM. And that's really not any different than trusting Apple to say the key in the T2 is the same is good. Trusting Android, that's really not any different than trusting Infineon to make. The TPM, the only real difference is it's portable across platforms. Um, 
So anyway, I'm going to go on the other, the other topic. The reason that came up here is I think a document like this is a, a really good place to put values, you know, maybe hardware. I don't, I'll make the same comment I made in LAMPS. I think it's going to be hard with a binary assertion of hardware versus not hardware. Um, but the distinction, any distinctions we made about, we make about quality should not go in here. It needs to go somewhere else. Otherwise it becomes exactly the same comment labs. So we're gonna have to find a way to enumerate these somehow, right? To, to make any value assertion between a software TPM that's running in my process that I have an e, happen to have an EK signed by something on my platform and an Infineon TPM or something else. We have to find some way to make a distinction between those. Something like this doesn't need to worry about that. We just need to have some value that somebody else decides, not this one. Yeah, I, I tend to agree given that there's gonna be three different documents that specify for, for TLS for uh, the- Right, we have three, we three at least yeah. three documents. I think I heard a fourth that's gonna need it, so yeah. Yes, Aaron. Aaron. Yeah, uh, having having read the stock when it first went out on the mailing list, I I think it's completely appropriate for this document to not specify exactly what the CA is supposed to do in order to determine whether it trusts the attestation that it receives, because that's a matter for like five different documents because it is very difficult. The thing that surprised me was that this document didn't talk about that at all. I was expecting a paragraph that was like, and when you receive the key attestation, you should make sure that you trust it via informative reference to some other set of things that might be useful. Instead, it was just like, the CA gets the attestation back and is good to go. And I was like, I am very confused now. Um, so, so some sort of reference to the fact that this is a hard problem and CAs need to do it correctly would be very appropriate, but I don't think it should be fully specified here. Yeah, uh, I totally agree. I appreciate the feedback and I'll definitely add that. Um, I think I ended up basically writing the informative text out on the mailing list anyways. So I think I can just put that in the document. All right, Carl. Um, yeah, I agree that there's a lot missing in the document. Like uh, there's no um, um, no example of the um, um, posters get with the new identifiers, but that's fine. I mean, it's really a zero zero um, version. So yes, Carl. Carl, are you still with us? I was just going to say on the second question here, um, um, well, I thought so. Maybe you don't hear me. No, no we we'll see you. you. We hear you too, so you're good. There's a terrible lag, so I'm just I'm just going to speak. Okay. Um, <laughs> the verification procedures ha have to be in a in a separate document. That, that's all I was going to say. Over. Okay. Thank you. So. Um, so you have some open questions uh, for us. Uh, we have an obvious question for you. Are you seeking adoption? Yes, I am. Yes. Um, in okay. consideration of vendors already beginning to support this, um, I would love to get as much feedback about bachelor encoding of the requests uh, mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Um, I think there's been broad interest on the mailing list for someone to write something, whether it be an, an existing draft or a new draft. Um, it does seem like people are attempting to use key attestation and ACME and CMP and EST and TLS and it seems to be a very prominent uh, topic this year. Okay, so that of course will go on the mailing list. Um, so uh, thank you. So we're out of time. How did we do that? It was supposed to be short. Yeah, we, we used the time exactly. I mean, we even have 30 seconds for any other business. which I guess we're all getting back. Okay, thank you all. All right, and enjoy the rest of your ride. Hope to see you more physically in uh, London. Yes, please. Thank you.
All right, you. Yes. I meant Carl, both. Carl Wallace. Oh, yeah.